When we first started talking about area under a curve, so the area of this region here, or, or the area under any curve for that matter, we said that we could estimate the area using rectangles, and we drew the rectangles in looking just like that. And we said, okay, the height of this rectangle is just the height of this x value. And then the height of the, the, the second rectangle is the height of the second x value, and the third x value, and then the last x value. Well, that's, that's, that's fine. There's absolutely nothing wrong with that. But why did we choose the heights to be the top right corner? That's a very specific place for the height of, the, of each rectangle to be. It could have been that if we wanted to, we could have drawn the rectangles in like this. So now the height of each rectangle is the top left corner. Now what's the difference between choosing these two methods? Well, in this particular example, now our estimate is, is an underestimate. Oop, that's not what I wanted. Uh, you can see here, we don't get enough area because that's all the area that's missing. Whereas the, the, the right-hand rectangles, so let me pull those up again, where the, the top right corner, the, what we had there was that we had more area than we needed. So in this particular example, it's a difference between the estimate. Is it an overestimate or an underestimate? Now what about in terms of computation? How does, this, how does that make a difference between this right-hand rectangle and left-hand rectangle? Well, let's, let's take a look using this example. Let's see if we can find the exact area. And it should be the, the same area. Uh, it should be the same area as if we, um, if we're finding the exact area as if we took a right-hand sum. So let's do that. So we'll go through the exact same process. The width of each rectangle is just going to be the length of the interval, 1 minus 0 divided by the number of rectangles, so that's 1 over n. And now, the width of this first rectangle, okay, so we have from 0 to uh, 1 over n, to 2 over n, 3 over n, and then we would get to 4 over n, but this means there's only 4 rectangles, right? 4 over 4 is 1. But let's not use 4 rectangles. So this is there for just illustration purposes, but let's pretend we're going to maybe use 1,000. So it would be 1 over n, 2 over n, 3 over n, blah, blah, blah. You see where this is going. Now the key here, the key difference is what is the height of the very first rectangle? Well, it's the height of the left end point, right? The height of the very first rectangle is the height of the left endpoint. So here, it's f of 0 is the height of the first rectangle. What is the, so let me write that, height of rectangle 1. What is the height of the second rectangle? Well, that's 1 over n. What about the height of the, the third rectangle? Well, that's 2 over n. Now it looks like we probably have enough to figure out the height of the ith rectangle. So if we want the height of the first rectangle, we get 0. But the height of the second rectangle, we get 1 over n. Height of the third rectangle, we get 2 over n. So it looks like it's going to be i minus 1 over n. Now let's see if that works. Well, the height of the, the, uh, the first rectangle would be i is 1, so 1 minus 1, that's 0 over n, which is 0. That works. The height of the second rectangle, well, that's 2 minus 1, which is 1, so height of the second rectangle should be 1 over n. It is. So this gives us the right formula. This gives us the right formula. Well, what about the very last rectangle? Well, the last rectangle is really, it's, it's, it's not n over n anymore because we don't have a point. We don't have a, in fact, I should erase. Where, where can I erase it out of? Eh, I'm not on the right layer. But anyways, the last rectangle is this one. We don't have a rectangle when at, at, at 1. So we have a rectangle at, at the, the very last rectangle should be 1, this length 1, minus 1 over n, minus the width of one rectangle. That will bring us back by the width of one rectangle, and that will give us this height here, which is the last rectangle. So if we have n minus 1 over n, so we're checking the height of the last rectangle. So 
So f of, well, this simplifies to f of n over n minus 1 over n, which is what we just said it needed to be, f of 1 minus 1 over n. It's the height at 1, but we're shifting over by one rectangle. So it's really this height of this last rectangle. Okay. So we figured out, <clears throat> excuse me, we figured out our formula to, to give us uh, the height of any rectangle. And now all we have to do is, is write the limit of a sum. So what we have left to do is take the limit as n approaches infinity of the sum as i goes from 1 to n of f of i minus 1 over n times 1 over n. Okay, now do that limit and, and see what you get. So I'm leaving this to you. The, your answer should be four thirds. That's what we got when we when we did this uh, when we found this exact area using right hand rectangles. When you take this limit, the the right hand sum and the left hand sum both become the exact limit. They converge to the the exact area, which is four thirds. Okay, so it will be good practice for you to try this one on your own and see if you get four thirds. Okay, see you in the next video.